My name is Kate McKenzie, and I am one of the conveners from the New York City uh, Partnership. And um, I also work for City Harvest, which is uh, a food rescue organization in New York City. Food and fitness is well suited to be convened by City Harvest because of its vision. It's a vision that talks about um, communities and people in communities that don't have to rely on emergency food and don't have to um, wonder about where their meal, the next meal is coming from. Mm -hmm. um, we as an organization are striving for that. Mm -hmm. um, and we really try to, you know, we work, we feed 260,000 people every week. So those people are uh, coming from the communities that Food and Fitness is really working in. So it's a, a natural extension of the work that we're doing. Um, one of the challenges, though, is that particularly right now, City Harvest is, um, as a nonprofit organization, clearly uh, trying to seek additional funds for more food. Um, to feed people because the numbers are increasing to the tune of 25 to 50 to some organizations. Some soup kitchens and food pantries have 75% more meals that they're serving. Wow. Um, so, and, and that's an immediate problem. And so funders are sort of very willing to say, oh my goodness, we realize this is an immediate need. We will fund the immediacy. And food and fitness is about a long-term vision. And so in some ways they are... Um, in a very nice, contradictory way. They uh, clearly are about the same thing, but to talk about a future vision is just something that's really hard to do right now. People want to be there, but they also see, um, you know, unfortunately if a, if a husband or mother is coming home with a pink slip, that's what they're thinking about. Or if they don't know if they're going to pay their heat bill or their food bill, that's what they're thinking about. And maybe six months ago it was thinking about I really want to take my kids to the park, and, that, and I can't because I'm afraid of crossing the street or I'm afraid of what's going on in that park. Mm -hmm. We had their attention then, but right now, it's really about the economic crisis. And so I look forward to really framing um, this food and fitness project as a response to the economic crisis. And I think that Angela yesterday really started to get the words to do that. and. Um, it will be your job, my friend, <laughs> <laughs> to help us come up with those messages that sure. can get uh, more community residents, more funders, more cities, more states, and our government to respond to that. Yeah. So I always get a little nervous when we bring community residents to a meeting like this um, because they see Iowa which has more similarities than people think because of its uh, huge geographic focus in the northeast corner of Iowa. Um, yet when they see Holyoke, knowing that the people in Holyoke are experiencing the very same conditions, but they're dealing with a community of 30,000 people, where we're focusing on essentially four communities. Um, three of those communities have more than a million people each, and then oh the gosh. large community itself is more than eight million people. And by the end of this project, it could reach 10 million people. So what I really commend my community for um, is for not shying away from that and recognizing that we don't, we don't, you know, our definition of community is perhaps a little bit different than others, but we're all experiencing the very same need and um, want to ensure that all residents in New York City have equal access to affordable, healthy food in addition to opportunities for active living. So it is that motivation that's really um, inspires our, our community residents, our partners, our whole collaborative to be here. And it will take us, you know, it's, it's, it's an, another layer of challenge, but we New Yorkers like challenges and like to then come out on top and say we did it. And I think that we'll be able to do it with this project too. My greatest hope is that uh, I will, be able to have conversations with our real community organizations who say, thank you for this opportunity. This is the first time when we were asked what we wanted and we got what we wanted. Because so many, and even the people who are here have, you know, they're still not 100% there with us that we're gonna deliver on that, but um, they're so used to, to sort of being asked the questions and then people running away from them because either the problems are too insurmountable 
are too deep and this you know it said time and time again this is not about food this is not about active living this is really about equity and justice and that um, we're not running away from it and we're gonna we're gonna deal with it so I, I really hope that um, we can deliver and that communities are responding to um, to that and feel that, that they're being heard.